In what seems to be something of a recurring theme lately in my reviews in GT7 of talking about Corvette ZR1s, more recently of course a C4 ZR1, which was kind of a returning face, kind of not, being a 1989 model. Then of course we have the C6 ZR1 coming back in Gran Turismo 7 after last being seen in GT6. We'll talk about that at some point, fantastic straight line machine, as I said, fan favourite, possibly the most popular ZR1 overall, but then you could make a pretty decent argument for saying that, although that one's super popular, this one's probably the most significant ZR1 to be in the game, because it's the newest, the newest we've ever had, not just the newest in this game, and also, and here's where a personal theory of mine comes into play, a totally different breed of ZR1. Even if you put the three cars next to each other, C4, C6, C7, there is a notable change in approach to the aero package. Think of it this way. If you look at the C4 ZR1, compare it to what it was like in its time, it's very much the 911 Turbo of Corvettes. An all-rounder, designed to be good at everything but still usable on the road, and fairly forgiving. Fast forward in time to the fan favourite C6, well, that almost feels more like uh, a supercar approach. It's like what you would do to a Corvette to make it into a full-on supercar. 640 horses, supercharged motor, a more exotic look with the dark roof, that ducktail wing, the more aggressive, but still fairly subtle visual pack. It's not a track day toy. It doesn't look like that. There's no huge jutting out diffuser, no massive wing, no stripped out roll cage carbon fiber interior approach which is drastically different to what the Viper ACR was like. Very clearly, overtly, a track-focused car. But then we get to this one. This is ironically more of a Viper ACR-looking Corvette than the C6 ever was. That is where things change, because this is very clearly a track-focused Corvette first and foremost. That moves the goalposts. No longer is it supposed to be an all-rounder. And what that could mean is either really good or really bad. On the good side, that could mean that you take this idea of it being the ultimate all-rounder and then, to the nth degree, make it this crazy, you know, track car. But it could go the wrong way and go from being a really solid, smooth, fairly forgiving all-rounder, which is the C4 and the C6, and then make it just too over-the-top, too extreme, and maybe not forgiving enough. So what is this different approach like? Well, on paper, sounds like it could be an animal. 1,615 kilos is not that light, but by today's standards, that's about what you'd expect with more tech being put into cars, cars themselves are bigger than they used to be, and with 754 horsepower stock, well, it definitely could be a monster, given that, as crazy as it is to think about, that is more powerful than a Zonda R, on the street. From a car that in the game you can buy any time, you don't have to wait for it to come up like you would with a C4, and it's only 134 grand. It's a Corvette, so of course it's going to be cheap, but still, that's really, really cheap. What then is it like to use? Well, if you haven't had the chance yet, I would strongly urge you to check out this car, because in my opinion, this does what I was hoping the AMG Black Series would do. For me, the AMG was a disappointment when I drove it in the game. It's heavy, well, I talked about it in its own review, and it was a semi-controversial review. Some people seem to really love that car. This, to me, is what I was expecting the Mercedes to be like. This is a pleasure to work with. You can get the tail out, it can slip and slide, of course it's a Corvette, but you do any tuning to it, it immediately becomes a monster. Even without tuning, you can wipe the floor with many, many other road cars, easily, even on low-grade tyres, and I would describe this car as being a perfect, right-on-the-razor's-edge example of a car that is, how would I put it, maybe a friendly psychopath. It's a car that is really surprisingly beginner-friendly and very forgiving to use, but very clearly an absolute weapon. It almost feels like the most American Nissan GTR you could possibly imagine. <laughs> Except it does it through rear-wheel drive, manual gearbox, high downforce, rather than all-wheel drive, full of tech, you know, traditional forgiving, like the Nissan GTR does. 
To me, that's the biggest compliment you could give a track day Corvette, to even put it in the same sphere as something like a Nissan GTR, because sure, you can get a more conventional sports car to give you a great lap time, just give it an old school driving approach, and raw skill, of course, can do that. But to have a car that at the same time feels as forgiving as something like a GTR, or even remotely close to that, that's quite a feat. Now, of course, it's a game, so I personally cannot attest yet as to how accurate that feels. I've never driven a C7 Corvette, but at some point I probably will, and then I'll be able to, you know, say whether or not it's true. For now, it feels amazingly good in the game. What then as far as points? Well, I would actually say it's pretty damn reasonable. It sits at 647 stock, which is up around a similar level to something like a Group 4 car, sometimes higher than that as well. That's about right, given how much power it's got, offset by the weight, of course, but the performance certainly lives up to that, and it really is when you tune this thing that it becomes, I would argue, a god-tier streetcar. I tested out my theory on this and did something of a special project, which I'll doubtless release on the channel at some point, inspired by the Z06X concept car, which was just a marketing toy to sell parts for Corvettes, but the idea was a track-focused, track-only Corvette, like the Zonda R of Corvettes. So I thought, well, you know what, I'll do that. I made a ZR1X. No real increase in power, but drop the weight, improve the downforce, widen the track, stiffen the springs, etc, etc. What I ended up with, with fairly minimal effort, was a just under 800 point machine, again that's with standard power, that's the kind of ballistic missile we're talking about here, running qualifying tyres that could get around a track in absolutely ridiculous angles through corners with insane levels of pace and grip. And any car, you know, is good, or will be better, at least, with good tyres, but this was on a different level. It's one of those tunes that I think a lot of people are going to enjoy, and it's a car which I would most definitely recommend tuning yourself, because the potential that this thing has is ridiculous. It speaks volumes to the advancements in technology compared to a primitive ZR1 of the C6 generation in comparison. It's a remarkable car. And it's clear that Kaz loves Corvettes, they've always been a strong part of Gran Turismo, and uh, I kind of get the vibe that maybe he's happy he can finally represent a Corvette as being this level of outstandingly good. It's easy to, I believe, overlook a C7 because we've had the C7 Stingray in the game for a while, we've had racing versions, so you could easily look over this one. Even the Group 3 road car kind of has that hardcore road-going track car vibe. But if you haven't tried it yet, you really should. I cannot emphasize enough just how really, really damn good the C7ZR1 is. And I'm glad to be able to say that, because personally, much like the AMG Black series, I'm actually not a fan of how it looks. I am, on the other hand, a big fan of what it can do. Ultimately, though, that's it for my thoughts. Of course, slap yours down below. And until next time, I'll see you then with, of course, more reviews and tunes. But for now, as always... Thanks for watching.